my dog's in a mega esophagus chair. This is a homemade mega esophagus chair. In this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our experience, our dog Miko, how we feed him, how we log and track all his meal times and eating, and also the struggle and the good days and bad days. <coughs> Excuse me, just got over a cold. <clears throat> so, our 11 year old dog Miko, he's a good boy. He's a Lhasa Apso. He's uh, 11, so they lived 15, 16 years. Um, my wife, when I met her, I already had him. He was kind of a puppy, and this is her soulmate. This is her everything. She loves the dog more than me, okay? Um, I love the dog so much. Uh, he sleeps in bed with us. He sleeps next to us, well, all that stuff. So he's a good dog. So um, she cries sometimes and she's afraid. I'm, I'm unpacking the emotional part too, just to kind of build the story and then I'll get into the details. She's afraid the dog is going to die before it's time. Uh, she's very emotionally attached and uh, I'm not to the level she is, but I love the dog. I break down crying for the dog. We were lying on the floor the other day holding the dog crying together because we don't want him to go soon. So anyways, he was aspirating out. Um, we thought he was a puker. Our other vet told us because he would throw up all over the floor. We wake up in the morning, there's puddles of puke all over the place and clear slime and liquid. And we're like, what's going on? And then one morning he was aspirating uh, about two, three weeks ago. So he was <gasps> like that. And, and I was like, oh my God, we're going to take him to the vet immediately. So we rushed him to the vet. They said, take him to emergency, take him to emergency. And we find out the dog has pneumonia. What? So we're in there. It costs us about... 400 for blood, blood work, another 400 for something else, under a thousand bucks. And then they find out he's diagnosed with mega esophagus, which is the whole uh, throat in his, the peristalsis effect, like an anaconda snake that the muscles that keep pushing the food through. His esophagus is paralyzed and it's a rare, semi-rare dog disease to where the, I think it's the neurological connections aren't sending the electrical impulses to create the peristalsis effect. So therefore the food is just sitting in his esophagus. So we thought there's nothing we could do because the vet told us he has six to 12 months to live. You know, my wife and I are crying and then we find out that it's on the internet. You could, a Bailey chair, which is this chair here, which is like totally homemade. I made this some stuff downstairs. Uh, they're like 200 bucks if you buy one and measure the dog out. I took this material from like Home Depot with a bunch of zip ties and a base. You see here, he's got the tray, which I actually got to fix it so I could put the food in. I cut it out. I did this all in the basement in like two hours. I put foam padding in there. See, his feet. I got to somehow fix this. See, he's in there. He's chilling. He definitely doesn't like it, but he, he's gotten used to it a bit more. Here we have an egg timer. Set for 15 minutes every single time he eats. If he drinks any water whatsoever at all, we gotta set it for five minutes and put him in there. Uh, we feed him in there. If he really won't eat, then we do feed him on the floor and then put him right in there, which sucks is our little dog Gracie has to have her food behind there where she could squeeze behind the, the bars. The dog is not allowed to have any access to food or water whatsoever at all, period. Unless under supervision and then put in the chair because of the peristalsis effect, the the food or water could back up and go into his lungs and then cause an infection and pneumonia and could kill him within, he could be on IVs and $5,000 later the dog could be dead. The dog can't eat or drink. So um, my wife doesn't want to bring the dog to family events now because she doesn't want to have to explain to everybody that, excuse me, this oh, sorry. What are you still looking at? Still barks his ass off? So what we do is every time we feed him, we sit here. He now will not drink water, so we're mixing. He won't. He stop it. He won't drink water, so we're mixing. Stop it. So we're mixing. Stop it. So we're mixing goat's milk with water, and he'll drink goat's milk and creamer. I know it's bad, but he literally wouldn't drink water for four days, and we were gonna rush him to the vet. And now he's drinking goat's milk with water like this. And then we got this log here. I mean, it's filled. This is our Bible. We got a real Bible, but this is the Bible. Everything that this dog does is all tracked. Um, 3.16.18 continued. 3.30 p.m. Miko drank water. Chair, five minutes. 5.30 p.m. Miko ate. 
chicken balls and real chicken breast. Uh, he wouldn't drink water, gave him his meds because we were giving him a Prilosec, half a thing of half a serving um, Prilosec, one pill cutting, uh, broken in half with his antibiotic for his pneumonia. Shove it inside the food and give it to him. Uh, then chair 15 minutes every time he eats, chair 5 minutes every time he drinks. If he eats and drinks, he goes in the chair for 15 minutes. So we're logging it all. My wife asked me, I came up with this idea only because anything happens to that dog, it's my ass. So she says, when did Miko eat last? His name's Miko. I say, I don't know, look at the list. I don't remember. She goes, oh, okay, he just ate two hours ago because I'll be out running errands or something. She'll see he just ate. Like right now, I fed him earlier today. It's now 3.30 p.m. He, he just ate a whole bowl of real chicken breasts. He won't even eat his food anymore. He won't eat any, that motherfucker eat some cat food, though. He'll eat cat food. <laughs> so we're doing whatever we can to get him to eat. He was um, 22 pounds at his fattest. Now he's down to like 18.2 pounds. He did lose a weight, a little bit of weight to being old, but he has lost probably a pound or two from just not eating in this megasophagus. Now the good days and the bad days. It's up and down. On good days, he will be fine all day. He'll run around and play and jump and sleep. And we're like, oh my God, he's getting better. He's going to live for five more years. And we're all happy. And then the next morning, we'll have a bad day. And there'll be puke all over the place. And he's laying lethargic all day. And like my wife's crying. And I'm upset. And it's really stressful. We can't get him to eat. And oh my God, he's going to die. He's going to die. He's going to die. And then he'll turn around and be okay. So I guess there's these Facebook groups. Look at Maggot Esophagus Facebook groups. And there's, it's all these different dogs have it. I know this looks like a ghetto ass little chair, but it works for now. And he's actually got to be straight up. See how he keeps leaning like that? So here's the main issue with these Bailey chairs. It's not the chair, it's just, I guess, training the dog. He could actually sit down in that and be perfect height. So he's straight up and down. And the reason why is so the parasystalsis effect is simulated. And then in 15 minutes, the food can go down. I will sit there and I'll massage his neck like this. Massage his sternum. I don't know, I'm not a doctor, I'm just making shit up. But, you see, massage it to get it go down. You can also cup your hands like Qi Gong and tap his sides with his lungs if he does have pneumonia. It's good for the dog to help break up anything. Feed him food in, in balls so it can get down as fast as possible. No like shreds or stuff like that. So if you give him chicken breast, you ball it up and give it to him. Um, but yeah. So I gotta fix this chair. He's supposed to be stripping down what I was saying. If he was sat, he'd be fine. Cause my wife kept saying the chair needs to be higher. So if you're gonna make the chair higher, then he couldn't sit and his legs would get tired. But if you make the chair lower so he can sit and he's perfect, then he could stand up and jump right out. So it all really comes down to, we've got this here. Here you go. He keeps pushing it off. And we put this pillow here. And he's supposed to be straight up and down. And I can't, he's a really, really, really stubborn dog. He's got telekinesis and he's a psychic. I mean, literally, he can take his willpower like a, like a, um, like a splinter to you. It's weird, man. What well, he's a good boy. So anyways, I gotta go run some errands. He's got three minutes less on, less on the egg timer. And under Pavlov's dogs, uh, near linguistic programming, when the timer goes off, it'll go ding, 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 ding. And he knows now that's when he's allowed to get out of the chair. So it works out just fine. And I hope it gave you tons of information. Check out Mega Esophagus on YouTube. I'll put a couple links below this video. Check it out on Facebook groups and stuff like that. Like I said, I'm not an expert. I'm not a veterinarian. We're just trying to do the best that we can with our dog. And I'm sure my wife could probably explain it a little bit better than me. You can make your own Mega Esophagus chair. Make sure you log and track everything your dog's doing. If your dog is not eating or is throwing up, take him to the vet immediately. <laughs> it's better to drain your bank accounts than end up in regret. That's what I think. Because at this point, I don't even care. I'm, like the money thing is really stressful because we could easily drop five grand to this dog and there's no question you got to do it it doesn't matter how much it costs it doesn't matter if if you can't make your condo payment or whatever like we have there you go we have emergency savings in the bank but i think that's just the test of life because now i know people who have special needs children if you had a family member in a wheelchair or somebody like 
you can never judge anybody until you go through something yourself. And this is just a small example of what it's like to have a special needs dog. So it's all about uh, living a life of, of gratitude and being in the moment. And this is a test of your heart. Later.